Welcome back, Woodley here. Today we're on to talk with you about the challenges of power when you're building on a site, and especially when that site is far from the road. Uh, often as a homeowner, one of the things that you're thinking about first when you're thinking about building is you're thinking about view, location, beauty. When a builder walks onto a site, the first thing that they're thinking about is where are the utilities? And so you can see in the background here, behind me is the location of our site. And our driveway is about 1300 feet from the road. That is not an ideal situation to be building and to get utilities from. And the second challenge that you have related to that is National Grid, which is the service provider here in New York for us, will not send a planner on site until you have a foundation, a driveway, and a well or a septic in. How crazy is that? So you've got to put together a plan and a budget for a build project when they won't come out and tell you what it is that you have to do, how much they'll do. And so this is a great challenge uh, to figure it out. And so this is a big problem. It could cost you lots of money and people say, well, why don't you just go a solar off grid? And you're talking probably thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in order to have a solar off grid uh, with battery backup that can function that. And that is just uh, a ridiculous cost. And some people might prioritize that value. So we had to look at this and I wanna show you kind of the two options that we have and then uh, let you know what we came up with and uh, how it's gonna work out. Option number one, as you see here, is there's a pole. So to our advantage on this property here, you'll notice that we have this line cutting across our property going from one street to another street, uh, road next to it. And so one thought that we had and, and what we kind of have put into the budget was we could come off of this pole if they would put a transformer on that pole, come up the tree line here with a buried cable up to the house. That would be about 550 feet approximately of cable. And so what was uh, problematic with that approach is that we have to really upsize the cable, a very expensive cable, in order to account for the voltage drop over such a great distance. Now, um, Paul, our builder, was felt confident that we could do that. He's done another project of a similar distance where they were able to upsize the wire. But we were looking at that as... Um, kind of the most expensive scenario. So in our planning, we said, well, it, worst case scenario, that's what we would have to do. However, there is another pole, which is down here. Now the disadvantage of that pole is it's a much further run. It's a little over uh, 600 something feet, as opposed to more like 500 feet with the other pole. However, when the planner came, what we found out this week is that they are willing to uh, bring this up to 175 feet from the house with a buried line, and they're gonna bring it up here to about this location here, and they're, they'll, they will put a ground transformer in here, and then we can run a kind of more normal line underground up to the house. The electric uh, panel box is gonna be on, on this side of the house for that. So uh, what they're gonna have to do, the disadvantage of that is they have an easement um, to come up here. The advantage of that is that National Grid will be responsible for the power line all the way to the point, whoops, come back. They will be responsible to it all the way up until this point, and then we'll be responsible to it from there up to the house. So this was an issue that is, is pretty challenging from the planning standpoint, but it helps to go into that with budgeting the the high-end scenario and then if if something better works out you're good there so we had planned quite a bit of money for coming and burying that really large wire and when it came out with 
having to dig. We have to dig that hole. We got to put six inches of sand in it. And the cost to pay National Grid, um, basically, it evened out. And so getting that transformer closer to the house is much more ideal. But uh, you really, as you're thinking about your own um, site and building, you really have to give a lot of thought and consideration to power and how you're going to access power. Now, a bonus sort of thought for you, this is my analysis of you're wanting to think about, you know, stability, what if the grid goes down, how do you, how do you handle those things? In my opinion, the, the wisest way to do that, if you want to do solar, and which I want to do solar, but it's a down the road kind of add-on deal, is that you, taught, you get a grid tied system, meaning that you're, you're on the grid, but you have solar in addition, and then instead of paying for the batteries to have power in the event of power failure, you account for that scenario with a generator. And the cost of a generator is so much lower than the cost of batteries. Now, had this been a situation where we didn't have power lines coming across, we had another 600 feet that we had to go to, uh, you might start getting into a situation where it makes sense to do off-grid solar. And that's, so that's a value thing. So you have a cost thing, some people value that a little bit differently, and you have to weigh those out in your determination of what do you think is gonna be the best for you. But that's kind of my calculation of looking at those different factors and understanding uh, what's the best approach to meet those different objectives in the most cost-effective way. But it's no joke what you have for uh, planning for power, and it's really something that you really wanna think about on the front end of your project. All right, thanks for checking this one out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Catch you on the next one.